Good morning. So we are going to be doing this today. So this is a Wiggles guitar and this is a different one that I usually do. So if you are a longtime follower of my channel or you just really delved through the depths of the channel years and years and years ago, I actually did a guitar, this exact guitar. Um, and I didn't have as much success with it. It was circuit bent, but that video, the guitar actually died in the video. So if you watch it, which I'm going to go ahead and link it here and go ahead and put it in here so you can kind of see the section, this guitar actually like tones down and eventually the guitar just completely just outs. So the tone kept getting deeper and deeper until eventually it just didn't work again. So it was kind of interesting and kind of cool in a way that I got that on video and it just so happened to happen when I was shooting the video. But the point here is to go ahead and avoid that. So we're going to try to avoid that if possible and circuit bend this in a normal way so where it actually functions correctly and everything works as is. You know, so first thing we're going to do is go ahead and open this up and on this I don't believe we have to open all of these bolts so we're just going to try to open this and around here. Now that this is open, I want to go ahead and point out some of the uh, function on this that I would say are a little bit strange as compared to like normal instruments. Get ready to wheel. So you have this really Get quick function right wheel. here. So when this bottom button's actually Get ready pressed, to wheel. you have a motor that actually wiggles the back, which is really, really cool. But what kind of is weird about it is when the neck is wiggling, all of these buttons are rendered absolutely useless. So this entire thing is just absolutely useless. Now, one thing I did notice is I let it sit here and just kind of run its course. Eventually it will stop and the buttons will return back to normal, except for this song, which I believe is Larry and this guy right here. So neither one of them would actually work, but all the other buttons are perfectly fine. Whereas if this is not on, All the buttons and everything work. So if you get a guitar like this and yours is doing the same thing, just know that, you know, mine did the same thing as well, so yours is not defective in any way. And if you do get one and all of them work, then I guess this one is defective, but I haven't seen one of these in so many years and stuff that, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna be doing is opening up this circuit board right here. And the reason I'm gonna pick this circuit board is because we have all the resistors, capacitors, and everything right on this board. So I'm almost guaranteeing that our tempo tone control is gonna be right here. So let's go ahead and open up this side. So with this, I'm kind of having trouble figuring out which points are which when it comes to the tempo tone control. And when I have that, what I like to do is I like to flip the instrument over and I like to take a screwdriver, just a very small screwdriver. This one's a flathead. And you're gonna do almost the same thing, except we're just gonna go ahead and isolate the resistor. So 
I'm suspecting this one right here, just because of its placement. But just to confirm, we're gonna stick this screwdriver on one side of this, and I'm gonna go ahead and just hold on to it with my fingers and allow this internal resistance and see if the tone actually changes. So you can see the tone is fluctuating. So this is the resistor we're dealing with, which we flip over and cross-reference this on the other side. That's going to be this and this. So it's those two points. So as you just seen, it does have a crash point on its higher end. Luckily it was a soft crash, I just restarted it, started right back up. But that to me, given my past with this instrument, is an indication that I need to go ahead and add a master on and off switch just in case we have any of those crashes. So if you see right here, the motor is actually sourced directly from the battery cable. So we actually are dealing with two wires right here. That's not really going to change anything for us. We're actually just going to go ahead and desolder both of these and add our toggle switch just right on and add one of these to the side of both the toggle switches. Okay, so that one's out and then probably going to mount in the toggle switch just right over here because of our length. Now just to play it safe, we're going to go ahead and use a resistance substitute right here just so we can figure out how much resistance we can actually use without crashing this instrument. Or I should say how much resistance we can afford to not use before we crash this instrument. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure these two do not touch in any way. We're just going to go ahead and put one over here. I'm going to plug this up. If you haven't seen me use this before, it is a very nifty little tool that helps us find which type of, uh, which value of resistor we actually need. Alright, so... Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and reset this. Get ready to wheel. Okay, now we're back. So it looks like 10K was the crash point right here. So with a 20K, it worked great. It didn't crash. And looks like with a 20K, so as long as this is on, we are good to go. And we do want to go ahead and... Um, usually we would go ahead and worry about like internal resistance because there are there is internal resistance that is built up inside of these wires between the connections and all of that but on this one I'm not super worried about it so I'm gonna actually look for a 20k resistor and hopefully it's gonna work because it looked like it kind of dealt with the 20 10k um, just a tiny bit so we're just gonna go ahead and find a 20k resistor and if that doesn't work, then we'll go with the next, which is a 30K. Okay, so we have our resistors, and I have two 10Ks run in series right here. 
So we're adding up the values of both of those. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this. And we're gonna figure out which one of these actually responds to our ground here and which one's our median. So on this, I'm gonna go ahead and touch this one down. That one doesn't seem to be affected by it. Let's go ahead and use the other one. actually use the wires on this as opposed to using the alligator clips. Get ready to wheel. Get ready to okay so this one's our median right here. Seems I just didn't have a good grab on it so we're gonna go ahead and put that back on. I'm gonna go ahead and touch this to this um, Touch these resistors to the ground just to see what kind of effect this has on it. All right, so as you can see, that's a pretty low tone. That is almost to a stop. So I think we can go ahead and safely say that we can go ahead and touch here and it's going to be a complete stop. Now what I'm listening for here So that's not a good sign right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart it. Get ready to wheel. So what I may end up doing is putting a 10K resistor on this. So let's go ahead and check this just one more time, just with a 10K. All right, so as you can hear, that's not a dead stop. It's really low, so let's go ahead and pull it off. So yeah, it seems like we'll actually be good right here if we put a 10K resistor on because we can actually flip it in and out without any issues whatsoever. So we need a 20K resistance from the median to our higher tone. We need a 10K from our median to the ground. Pro sound of this. 
So the Pro Sound and the Sound LED if it's a quartz one. And how we're going to be doing that is we're going to be following the speaker wire here. And the speaker wire can be kind of confusing. So this part is fairly obvious. This is where the speaker is. And we're going to run it all the way through here. But then it gets wrapped up in a bunch of different wires. So as you can see, this is a wired mess right here. But I know that I'm looking for blue wires. So what I can do is I can look really closely right here. Let me use my solder light. And you can see that there are these two blue wires. And they are labeled speaker, so that's good indication as well. But realistically, I'm looking for these two blue wires right there. And then that's going to tell me that I'm dealing with my speaker right there. So now we're just going to go ahead and solder onto both of those. I'm also trying to hold the board down. So, here we go. So that one's in. Let's go ahead and get this. All right, and that one looks good as well. So we should be good to go. Let's test the LED on it.